I have not come across a blind person who have become sighted. Unfortunately, I've come across too many sighted people who have become blind. I stood for like maybe two or three minutes, was like, ah, a blind individual, writing like this. Even a typical human being, self, cannot do most of what he is doing. They are pushed aside. They look at them as perpetual beggars. And it's not supposed to be. Some of us, we are learned. We don't need pity. We need opportunities. We need encouragement. A February 2021 report by the World Health Organization says that globally, 2.2 billion people have a visual impairment. Of that number, 64 million people suffer from glaucoma, the leading cause of irreversible blindness in the world. It is projected that by the year 2030, 95.4 million people would suffer from the disease. Being a black person is a risk factor. At Ikeja Junior High School, Lagos, Nigeria, there are 55 steps from one end of the hallway to the other. There are 18 steps down the stairwell and 15 steps between classes. Cyril Ujime counted them all because he needed the figures as well as his white cane to find his way around work. It's more than the cost price. It's Cyril is a 48-year-old visually impaired oh, no. mathematician he teaches math here to students with and without hearing disabilities in junior secondary classes 1 to 3. This situation presents a peculiar communication challenge. Imagine they will do sign language, I cannot see what they are signing. I will talk, they cannot hear what I'm saying. So if they want to talk, I cannot even hear them. They, are not, they will make noise with it and it has really been a very difficult situation. How are you today? Fine, fine. I had to learn a little bit of sign language and that gladdened their hearts. They love seeing me making that effort to communicate with them. Unfortunately, they feel, because I cannot see them back, uh, they feel saddened about it that I'm not seeing them sign back to me, communicating with, them, with me in their own way. Here's where 30 year old Tawal Kat Babatinde comes in. Take notes. It's over the cost price, not the selling price. She's a sign language specialist at the school. She works with Cyril to coordinate and communicate math lessons to the class. I'll make sure the class is being arranged. Okay, keep quiet, watch what he's saying, explain. When he's explaining, I'll demonstrate. You do give them classwork and homework. I'll mark it, distribute it to the students. Honestly, the first day we worked together, I stood at just for like maybe two or three minutes, was like, ah, a blind, a blind individual, writing like this. Even a typical human being, self, cannot do most of what he is doing. So I was like, I was amazed. Cyril Ojeme is a 1996 graduate of pure and applied mathematics from the University of Ilori, Kwara State. He's also an award-winning math and further math teacher with experience spanning 11 different schools in five states across Nigeria since 1999. Cyril recalls a childhood experience that motivated him to take up teaching as a career. I used to have a math teacher. He would just put some so, um, problems on the board and would just be smiling. We would not be able to solve it. So in my mind, I said, I want to be a teacher, whereby I will make math to look simpler than what this man is doing. That resolve made in the early 80s still nudges him to demystify math for children today. However, in 2012, Cyril was diagnosed with glaucoma. This almost put page to his life ambition of teaching math. When I first of all found out 2012, it was like a, a shock to me. Because as a then, in my family, the extended family, we only know for maybe eye issues such as uh, myopia or long distance issue. Then maybe at worst cataracts, but nothing like glaucoma. 
So it was a surprise to me. And when it came, when it started, it was as if it was an insect in my eye that was blowing my vision. So when I was told it was glaucoma, I went to Google it to read more about it. When I learned it was white blindness, I got a bit scared at first. But I said, okay, let me see what can be done. Dr. Adiola Onokoya is a professor of ophthalmology at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Luth. She throws some light on Cyril's condition. Glaucoma is the commonest cause of irreversible blindness. It's a disease of the nerve of the eye. That nerve is like a cable that connects the eyeball to the brain. In glaucoma, what happens is there's some damage, you know, inside the eyeball where you have those nerves originating from that we call the optic nerve. They are damaged. And what damages them? Well, it's either there isn't enough blood flowing into them or because there's a lot of pressure inside the eye. And once those cells in the eye die, you know, even the eye is opened, is looking at whatever object, but there is no connection. There's a disconnect between what the eye sees and the brain. So the eye looks normal, but no image processing is taking place. What causes glaucoma and how can it be treated? Nobody knows the cause. And if the cause of a disease is not known, then there's no cure. It's commoner in blacks than in the Caucasian. There's just an inherent, you know, risk for us to develop glaucoma, being blacks. And then if you have a family history, because genetics is at the basis of glaucoma, really. And then if that pressure is high, that's high pressure, intraocular pressure, if it's high. And then people who have severe hypertension, people who have very low blood pressure, even people who are using low blood pressure medication but they are overusing it. Management of the glaucoma, we can give eye drops. And if the eye drops are not working well, then you may have to go to surgery. You know, it's a lifelong disease. But suffice is to say that once you have lost vision from glaucoma, it is not recovered. Cyril was in the prime of his career when glaucoma struck. He was deputy head of the math department, mathematics coordinator, and was vying to be head of senior school before he began to have challenges with his vision. The new reality devastated him. He began to struggle with tasks that were once easy. Then, to be moving around, it was difficult for me. There are times I just miss my way when going to the class. I would not really know the right class that I'm going to until I ever come back and count my steps again. Some of my colleagues will be assisting me in typing to be marking that I'm going through a phase. And I thank God for my colleagues then who rallied around me to see that I was not failing. You know, being a private institution, they were not looking at whether you are going through a phase or whether you are going through a medical situation, there was for you to be effective, no matter what it takes, be effective. Don't go down, don't, don't relent in your effort. So I was trying to meet up. He sought medical help in 2012. However, the doctor's strike paralyzed healthcare services for six months. In that time, his eyesight worsened. For six months, when they were on strike, I could not get medical attention. And that was when the eyes deteriorated. Then after, when they called back the strike, it was a bit late. The pressure in the eyes became very high and uncontrollable. Despite eye drops and medication, it just skyrocketed. If the doctors were on ground, I would have been able to get the proper medical attention on time. I would be able to at least know the right eye drops to take to preserve the vision. And I'll be able to, at least, if uh, it was not uh, going, uh, becoming better, at least the doctors would have been able to refer me to Lutz or, or even to another institution entirely for me to get proper attention. Indeed, the lack of a reliable healthcare system in Nigeria does jeopardize the health of citizens. Additionally, Glaucoma does not show symptoms, therefore Cyril only began to have signs of visual impairment in the advanced stages of the disease. We usually advise that we should get our eyes tested regularly. Once you are above the age of 35, you should 
make it a point of duty to get your eyes examined once in two years. But if you have a family member who suffers from glaucoma or you have a family member who is blind, you don't know why, you know, you should check your eyes for glaucoma. So regular eye examination is the way to detect it at the very early stage. And once it is detected, treatment is started and we can then slow down that rate of progression. As Cyril's eyesight was deteriorating, his work at Olashere Grammar School in Oshun State was failing. In March 2015, he made a decision he never imagined he would take in his early 30s. Cyril Ojimen resigned. I had to meet the HOD, my supervisor, that look, I cannot continue like this, that I don't to be a burden to the students, members of staff, and especially my immediate colleagues. It's best for me to quit while the ovation was still loud. Nothing prepared him for the challenges ahead. He was about to face trying times due to a deteriorating vision and a lack of steady income. 2016 to 2018, I recall those two years, the worst period of my life. Number one, I stopped going out. Two, feeding myself, my family became difficult. Three, paying for children's school fees stopped. After exhausting my gratuity, nothing was coming in. A lot of expenditure came in, no income. So everything was just dry. And I felt for my children because it was something they never expected, never wanted to experience. My wife did all she could to support, but it was all to no avail. She became more or less like a beggar, asking people around for assistance. Myself, I started calling people, calling my brothers, calling those that I know, those who I don't know, to see what they can do to help me out. I got to almost to a stage of depression, but my wife and my children, they stood by me, they encouraged me that it's not over. Just when the night got darkest, some lights shone through. Cyril got to know of the Federal Nigeria Society for the Blind at Kappa Oshodi. It's a special rehabilitation center for the blind. He didn't have the funds to enroll for the vocational training course. His friends and family began an online campaign to crowdfund his rehabilitation. The help started with my classmates. Federal Government College Kano classmates. They came in at first, they helped with the surgery, but after a while, they stepped back to take care of their own personal issues. But by the time I now raised the voice again in the wilderness to say, please, I need help, they came again, sent one or two things just to keep body and soul together. My elder brother came in, then ex-students, those that I taught, came in as well. And they already to help me out until I graduated. With his fees paid, he began a one-year process to rehabilitate for his new life. I did braille reading and writing, did uh, rehabilitation and mobility. Mobility is by means of how you move around with, without being aided with the use of a white cane. This is a white cane. It's a white cane. It, you just put it on the ground and you just be feeling around. It guides one, a visually impaired person, to move around freely without any fear of falling down. Then I learned how to operate the computer using keystrokes. My students from Peja Junior High School. So I'm, I'm going through their scores. Gradually, I, get, I started getting used again to the laptop, something I felt I could not do again. And what really helped me was the application that was installed in the computer. It's called JAWS, Job Access with Speech. On the phone, we have what we call TalkBack. So that's the way we started using handset and the computer in general. The experience changed my life and my way of seeing life in a new perspective. In 2019, Cyril graduated as the best student at the rehabilitation school. Thereafter, he enrolled in another course by Sight Savers, an international non-governmental organization 
dedicated to empowering the visually impaired with digital skills. Sight savers really helped me out in terms of how to replan yourself, how to organize your career, how to work out your CV to make it to be a one-page document, how to prepare for an interview, what kind of questions to expect, um, how to do follow-up after an interview, then preparing for the work environment, and it gave me that boost and that confidence to be bold, to be self-confident, to be to have that charisma, to have that character, to move on. So such did that for me. Despite all these training, he was not quite prepared for the challenge of getting back into the labor market as a person with disability. Luckily, an old connection came through. The person's name is Mrs. Grace Egobi. I will be grateful to her. She got in touch with me and said, ah, there's an opening in the public sector. They are looking for a math teacher and she, she's going to submit my name, being that and that's my course. And an interview was conducted and today I gained, uh, I was employed. I was posted to Ikeja Junior High School. When I first informed the principal, Mr. Safiu, he said, he's not going to reject me because he sees in me something that I can, that will be of benefit to the school. He uh, gave me a brief interview in my office and he told me that he will be able to handle uh, mathematics skillfully. So well, I said, let me give him a try. And since then I've been watching him. And what I noticed about him is that he has great passion for this job. You will never see him coming late to work. He's always front in the class and he does the work with passion. I'm happy his uh, decision of accepting me is, is paying dividends now. And ever since I stepped in here, I've been putting my best, and I believe uh, the best is still yet to come. Just when he thought getting a job was hard enough, commuting to and from work as a visually impaired man became a tough road to travel. When I leave the compound, I stay at the gate side. The person that do help us at times, he comes in, he will take me to the bus stop. I will enter a bus going to Osho D. I will drop at Kappa. From Kappa, I will take a bus coming down to PWD drop at PWD. When I get down, uh, God has been faithful. Somebody is always there. They will take me across the railway track and to the other side, bring me over to this side, to the GRE side, drop me at the gate. At times it will be a teacher, a fellow teacher. At times it will be a student. At times just be a passerby who, just, uh, who has a mix of kindness in him or her. This is David Okon, former president of the Nigeria Association of the Blind. He is the current chairman of the association's education committee. Okon was born sighted, but became blind as an infant. Like Cyril, he had a hard time securing a job despite his skills and education. He's now a staunch advocate for equal opportunities for persons with disabilities. Blind people can work as long as they have the education that is required. They need training like other people. It might be some specialized training, but honestly, it's not, it doesn't cost the price of a rocket. They need equipment that will make them function appropriately. That might cost a little more than what you give. But every employer should think this way. Okon also analyzes the role that the Nigerian society has played in perpetuating the belief that persons with disabilities are outcast. The society is yet to uh, come to terms with the fact that a blind person or a person with disability is a member of the society or they see him as that lesser being. You can even hear things like, this handsome man or this beautiful girl is, or lady is blind. That is just nothing but pity, but 
are they ready to see you as an equal stakeholder in the society, in the organization, in the workplace, in the in school environment, even in the church? The answer is not in the affirmative for now. A blind person would have honorarily not been so um, disadvantaged if the society was more enabled. The environment, the road networks, was not built with me in mind. And even when the government even did some uh, walkways, pavements that you could walk and not be run down by moving traffic, you find out that that is not possible because the walkways have now become markets. The bike owners, the ones we call Okada, park their bikes on top there. And so I now would then, it wouldn't be as if I'm more handicapped than I should be. Drawing from his personal experience with disability discrimination, Cyril makes a passionate plea for an inclusive society. Those who have physical disabilities, they are pushed aside. They look at them as perpetual beggars. And it's not supposed to be. Some of us, we are learned. We don't need pity. We need opportunities. We need encouragement. Those who are, who are lacking the education, they need to go to school. Those who need employment, they need to get employment. Those who need to even start uh, their own uh, crafts and their own uh, little business, they need such help. Every six minutes, someone is told they are going blind. Leading medical journal Lancet Global Health projects that global blindness will triple by 2050 to 115 million. Okon speaks to these figures as he calls for a paradigm shift in how society views and treats persons with disabilities. I have not come across a blind person who have become sighted. Unfortunately, I've come across too many sighted people who have become blind. The question then is, why don't you think of making the society a better place? In case it will be that person you know, or even you, because there's nothing that says that it cannot be you tomorrow, so that will not join us in the crying and lamentations that we're going through. In January 2019, President Muhammad Buhari signed the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Prohibition Act. The act criminalizes discrimination against persons with disabilities and requires all public organizations to reserve at least 5% of employment opportunities for these persons. But that law has the challenge of enforcement. Oh, what you gonna do? <laughs> As for Cyril Ojimen, he has found a job that pays him two times Nigeria's minimum wage and he plans to retire in the teaching profession. However, many other PWDs are not as lucky. They can be found on the streets begging for arms to survive or locked up in homes hidden by their families for fear of discrimination.